first off, your reaction to President Obama's State of the Union address in the middle of the night here, so obviously most people didn't see it, but, but the, the real focus was income inequality and the president calling that the defining issue of our time. Do you agree? I think what I agree with is the emphasis on ensuring that the United States can get back to being competitive and growing and having the platform for uh, investment to take place uh, uh, and also for coming, going into, back into a dynamic environment for business to crack the calculus for growth in the United States. I think that piece, you know, overall, that's really the overarching, I think, message. The president also outlined uh, what he sees the Buffett rule playing out as, with any individual in America making over a million dollars a year paying at least 30% in taxes. That would dramatically change the system. Your take on that? I don't think we, got, we need to get hung up on specific tax issues. Uh, we've, I've said many times that the United States has to have a more competitive uh, tax policy um, uh, that, that, that generates a better environment for business, a, a, a less complicated, more clear tax policy, a reform tax policy of the, for the 21st century. We've come out and said that, and it shouldn't be a Band-Aid here and a Band-Aid there, but an overhaul uh, of the, uh, and a holistic uh, reform of the tax policy. And you push very hard for the ability for companies like yours to repatriate foreign profits at a, at a lower well, that will tax, be part, that tax will be, rate. That would be part of that, for, but for it wouldn't be just a, a just single, sing, single uh, element of it. What would that do for jobs? What would that mean for Coke specifically in terms of job creation in the United States? Would it make a material difference? I think it will make a material difference for U.S. companies to become competitive, more competitive versus their peers around the world, and that would be a good thing for you, the United States because most of the U United States companies that would become more competitive are owned by U.S. shareholders. When we spoke here last year, you said you were, quote, encouraged about job creation in the United States. I, I want to get your read now. I think compared to this time last year, um, we see um, uh, more uh, um, bright uh, lights uh, in the United States. The consumers are a little less confused. There's more travel. There's more mm -hmm. going out and eating out. Those are good signs. And so, and that's not a surprise. We've said before, a year ago, that the U.S. would probably be uh, the first economy to come out of this mm -hmm. crisis. The United States should never, never one, no one should ever bet against the United States because it has got fundamentally the best demographics of any Western nation. It is an innovative society and a society that can reinvent itself better and quicker than any other, and I think that's what we're seeing. And uh, if you look around the world, I think we have issues in, in, in some parts of the world compared to this time last year that are less bright than they were then. Sure. So um, I think it's a mixed bag, uh, but the imperative for all businesses, small, medium-sized, or large like ours, is to be able to crack the calculus for growth, mm. continue to invest with confidence in the future, and continue to hire. Just take the case of Coca-Cola. We currently, in our system in the world, employ just under 700,000 people. In the next 10 short years, mm -hmm. we're going to create jobs for an additional 100,000 people in the world, 10,000 jobs a year. And that's directly by Coca-Cola. When we create one job, generally in our supply chain, there's 10 more jobs created through the multiplier effect. So this is what is the imperative for all businesses, working closer with government, working closer with civil society, education, generate more innovation, compress the commercialization of innovation faster, better, more effectively, and create growth.